Hi everyone, in today's video we have Saurabh Bharti with us. So in this video you'll learn about his journey which is not only inspiring but also a great testament towards his power of learning, sharing knowledge and education but also giving back to the community. Now one of the key things you also learn about him is his humility and his gratefulness towards people he has met 10 years ago. He speaks about some people who have helped me get into the space and learn so which was a great insight into how kind and so thoughtful that person is. Uh, so please let's welcome Saurabh and get to know his journey through his words. Thanks for joining the podcast. Hi Saurabh, welcome to the Pat podcast. How are you doing? Thanks Apnar. I'm doing good. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. And Saurabh, just to get started, so where are you right now and uh, how are you doing? <laughs> okay, so I'm in London today and I'm working here with a company which is called as EY. I think most of us know that. So it's a Saturday. I think I made you to work on Saturday to get record this thing. So, but yeah, that's okay. So I'm doing really good. The most, I mean, the weather is uh, is 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 very cold here now. It is just changing winter's time. So yeah, it's 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 really getting changed here now. Okay, no, the pleasure is all mine, and uh, I'm glad that you have some time today to talk to us. So, a few things is congrats on your 10 years, and then congrats on your 1,000 plus subscribers. It's just the beginning, I guess, but uh, congratulations, and uh, I'm glad you're helping a lot of community members with your educational videos and stuff. So, talking on those, how did you get started into the dynamics for a bit more on the video, if you can tell us? Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for this first. Uh, yeah. So about my journey. Okay. I have to go and look back 10 years now. Okay. So where did I start? So, okay. So by education, you know, I am, uh, I have done the engineering and computer science. After that, I thought to go for my master's. Uh, uh, I done the MBA and uh, I did my MBA in again in information technology. So I didn't do the MBA. Uh, I think most of people do it like a marketing, finance and a strategy and all those things. I did it in information technology. And that's where I got an interest that, okay, what should be my uh, a career path? Like what, what, what will be most fit to me? Because somewhere I had a, uh, uh, I had a close uh, connection towards the technology. But I think I do not want it uh, uh, to do the the coding part or the development part, right? Yeah. But that's where it, it, it blended into the IT, uh, the ERP consulting business. And uh, uh, that's where I started my first job. So when I started my first job, I joined uh, kind of uh, keeping in mind like uh, uh, like it's a it's a consultant job, but I am going to work on a Microsoft product. I I, I didn't know that any anything about that product. Okay, so I landed in that job. I started with the uh, with this company, and they said like now you have to work on this Microsoft Dynamics product, and that that time it used to call as Accepta. Okay, okay. so I worked on that product, uh, started there from zero, and one of the problem. I had that point of time, and I think a lot of uh, uh, other people also can relate if they are coming from that background or the learning curve, is that we did not have a lot of content and the help available on internet about this product, okay? So, not I mean, today we have a lot of content, a lot of blogs, good blogs, people are helping out. That time, it was just a Microsoft official content, right? You need to read that, and then make make your work right but what i had was uh, a good mentors right so i'm from engineering background mba from it right but then i became a finance consultant okay and trust me when i started my work and in, in the first year i did not know even the debit and credit what will be debit what will be credit so it was really bad but I had mentor with me, right? Uh, and I can name him. Uh, his name is Krishna, right? So Krishna sir came with a, now I think 25 plus years of experience in finance. Uh, he has been the uh, controller and had a bigger positions. And I had 
the opportunity at that point of time working with him so he was kind of a a, a mentor for me in helping in understanding the finance concepts and each and everything and he used to tell me like now you have to do this in system so that is where uh, i learned about exploring uh, uh, the system and then connected with the business so that is what uh, had set up the base for me uh, for becoming the finance consultant and the knowledge and the things now a lot of people thinks that i am the ca from background by background that because i understand the finance and all these things so sorry guys i'm not the ca i'm just a, a finance uh, not finance the it post graduate uh, who has learned all these finance bits uh, in these last 10 years which i had so yeah that that that's how i started my journey and it has been a long journey now it has been a roller coaster ride for me learning uh, and unlearning things uh, during this journey worked with different companies i worked with pwc microsoft capgemini and the first company of course which is very special to me is the coextrix technologies not a big name but yeah i started with this company and right now working with ey london so yeah, yeah that, that's a career summary career uh, no it. thank you i mean the way i look at it is right so your journey from it to finance and you are i think we started at similar times i have around 12 10 11 years ago right so we all were at the same time where if you need information either you need to know how to google <laughs> Because yes. even if you Google, you would not get the right hits at the time. <laughs> you would get some random information, and you have to sort yourself. What is the relevant information for you? And like Google said, is a technique. Doing the Google is a technique. You know. Yeah. It, it, I, I think uh, I I remember uh, when I was starting my career. So someone told me like, googling right things in a right keyword with right keywords is a technique. You should learn that also how to Google. So. Yeah. I remember, like, I used uh, five years down my career. I was thinking uh, in my resume, I just should put, "I'm an expert Googler." <laughs> That's one of my experience <laughs> because I, I should learned... put I should put that as well now. I know you definitely can. <laughs> And then, okay. no, that's a thing people don't realize. I think one of the key things I would just point for anyone new listening is we both kind of came from non-finance background. but we had to learn through your mentor like you mentioned uh, krishna right and i had yeah. another mentor like few other people don and others who kind of showed me the lay of the land in a way <laughs> like yeah. hey if you need to if you're speaking to an accountant they need to know these key things <laughs> right i think that's what adds value and right now people are in a great age where you can just google about finance and you can learn through 10 15 people and you are way ahead of us compared to you if you even start today <laughs> so yep I definitely like and and I, and i always say that right uh, my my thought process about learning is that you need not to start anything from scratch okay learn from others experience so if someone has written something created something take it build on top of that so you do not have time to have your own experience in each and everything build on top of other others experience that that will boost up your learning curve uh, definitely yeah and the key thing there is basically you don't need to make a mistake they, a lot of mistakes already happened people have done it so we don't have to revisit them you can just learn from those mistakes and start your your base has been different from a lot of people whose base was even a year ago because even a year ago microsoft was a different company compared like uh, compared to now because of the copilot and low code is going to uh, explode a lot more than people think because you don't need to know code that much anymore the people who know code are going to have different opportunities in my view because they are the one who's building everything behind the scenes now so exactly um, exactly and things have things are changing really fast yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and just to t- to talk on that finance aspect right i know you have a great video on how to become a consultant and stuff but i was just thinking here if someone's not from finance and wants to get into it uh, for me the barrier has become very low uh, but there are still few key things you need to learn in finance any tips you have on where they can start and how they should go of course 
okay so first thing uh, another thing i wanted to add like i have created a couple of videos on how to become finance consultant and now my objective in the future is i'm going to create more videos in end to end journey of a functional consultant starting like how project works and things like that so that that's what i'm going to do so all of you out there uh, i got a lot of queries at how do we move next step so i'll do that okay how anyone which is from non finance background and want to come into the it consulting and become a finance consultant or anything right uh, or a supply chain consultant let's say right yeah see for me i think we should we should always utilize our core strength okay so for me as an engineer or as in like post uh, uh, mba graduate in information technology what 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 was my core strength so i was really good in mathematics okay in the logical uh, in the reasoning right so i'm i'm good in that right so i took it finance as a math for me yeah so anything like let's say and and i people i mean i'm really sorry to uh, for for those people who are core finance and accountant i'm not uh, i'm not saying that what you know and what you explain is uh, is is wrong right it's just a my way of taking things like how do i perceive those things so i always take like for me let's say debit is plus credit is minus, minus. right so if i know something which is uh, which is my core strength i think i should apply that thing in my learning right that will make me and grab that particular concept or that area to to move forward right because if i try to i i don't know like uh, uh, there used to be like there are three key principle of accounting there was what debit comes what goes what goes out, what comes in is a debit what goes out is credit there there are some some rules around those things right and i never get those things right yeah. but keeping my uh, reasoning and the engineering background with the math uh, knowledge and something right i can now figure it out based on the finance activities which any organization does right what should go in a debit what should go in a credit right how it should be asset and how it should be liability right so always try to uh, relate those things with your core strength or the core core uh, knowledge what you have i think that is the base for you to build on top of that that's the first thing the second thing is if you want to like i always say this to everyone if you want to really know that whether if you are learning something and now you want to judge that whether you understood that part or not right are you now comfortable with that concept or that particular product or things right how do you judge that right normally people what they do i mean i might come to you hey rafner uh, can you help me can you take my interview and tell me like i know this thing or ask me couple of questions yeah i always say that you need not to do any of such thing right always the moment you start preparing your is start explaining those concepts with your own examples right if you are able to explain that concept with your own examples i am 100% sure that you have reached to a level that you understand that particular concept or the things right yeah. but if you are still using a same example what your mentor has told or maybe someone has explained in a blog or somewhere else that means still you are in a in you are thinking from their perspective not your perspective and if you are not thinking from your perspective you are somewhere lacking in that particular thing so you need to work on so that you build your examples your thought process around that so i think in my opinion if you do these things you will be able to crack anything in this world yeah no that's great i, I think i also for i i can also attest to that when about uh, in a different way too right so one of the key things i learned was i was listening to a different book about uh, a hidden opportunities or something right one of the key things there was um sometimes people learn languages right when you learn a language people always wait for the course to finish before they start talking 
you should start talking every day from the day you started even if it's with five words you learned today you should start using them then you actually figure out in your mind your mind starts to use it as your primary language <laughs> right yeah. you will start thinking like that and then you can ex- you can explore that language and you can actually be fluent in that i think uh, coming from india like you and i and we are sorry it's my reactions but uh, coming from india and stuff people don't realize one of the reasons we are kind kind of bilingual is we know very little hindi or other things if we are growing up in the beginning but we keep using it every day here and there and before you know by the time we get to a certain age we know two languages and that's a great thing that i learned through that book but like you said i think people if you are learning finance one of the key things to do is start explaining them to your friends or even write down your own different take an example and write the same things in your example let's say you know a different business if someone's talking about let's say they're talking about a pillow company or whatever right you need to think about what business you know or your family knows and expl- put that into their perspective and then you'll get to know more i think teaching has taught me that one thing as well by making videos as well we do a lot of research i'm pretty sure saurav does it too because he's thinking about how can i make it much more generic language right once you get to that level any topic becomes easier so yeah i agree with you and i think that's a great um first step for anyone listening uh, just yep. start doing that and then you'll be good um definitely yeah. completely agree on that yeah and and the next thing i was thinking was mostly in terms of my own my own thought process but uh it so i it feels like learning and adapting seems to be a significant part of your journey because you're always been learning and uh, not adapting i would say sharing i might might be sharing because you've been writing before you started making youtubes could you share some share some uh, challenges you faced early on to overcome that burden uh, or maybe not a burden but overcome that first step to like make a first video or write a first blog uh, can you share some of your experience in that yeah of course so okay so i started my uh, writing uh, i mean blog journey uh, almost 4 years back which is i still remember in 2020 it started okay yeah. so i was in us in 2020 okay and I, it was a different time zone than the india time zone right yeah. so when everyone was sleeping in india i was awake there right so i yeah. didn't have a lot of things to do and then uh, what i realized is that i and and one of the thing which i was always facing at that point of time is that see when you when you start learning right when you are at a very base level you get lot of content out there okay which is very generic in terms of setting up the base right yeah. but on a day to day basis what happens that you come up very unique scenarios which are very specific to your project very specific to your customer very spe- specific to any industry or the business yeah. right and now thing is that when you want to tackle those scenarios or the problems right and then when you go out and ask this you have very less people helping out, helping you out on those parts okay because now it becomes very specific things and now someone has to get into your shoes get into your problem and give the solution it's not something that okay this is how you do in microsoft dynamics 365 something like that they have to give a thought process and that is where i thought like many times it was uh, it was not available uh, on on community or uh, maybe forums and the blogs and all those things it was it was lacking right uh, for me i mean i was not getting that help and a lot of times the people were not also up to date right so which means like people know things but maybe they do not have time to from their day to day life to read about something new which microsoft has launched or added right so these these were the two things which triggered my thought and i thought like okay if i am not getting the help the similarly there will be people who are not getting help uh, i mean same as me so can i start putting things which i have learned today or this week out there so that if someone relates to that they it can help them out right yeah. so one was that i was not uh, i mean i was uh, having a lot of time in in the off hours like when india was sleeping and then i was awake there so 
the first blog i still remember i started writing on the new features which microsoft is launching yeah. okay so and i i before that i already uh, purchased the uh, this uh, blog site wordpress blog site but i never used that yeah. so it was just sitting there but and then i was very scared i mean as you said like what is the change the first uh, first thing was that how do i make my blog site on words uh, wordpress right i was very scared that it's not coming good the it is look and feel is not good and all these things and i didn't know anything like how to create that wordpress site i just purchased it that's it yeah. nothing yeah. else so that was one thing so because of that uh, the thing fear i did not use that words uh, wordpress site so what i did is i started with linkedin article section yeah so i started using the linkedin article putting the features and everything and i was very very conscious about writing because you always have a fear that what others will think what you are writing right is this right is this right thing to do is this right thing to write also right so lot of thing lot of thought process was there but i think uh, somehow you have to come out from th- that thought process and start putting and your first blog will be very bad yeah okay i mean it will be very bad definitely okay but trust me when you make the 50th or 10th or 100th blog right and you look back you will yourself see that you have improved a lot with, with without without putting lot of thought process in this journey right because it improves by by itself okay so that is where i started writing the linkedin article and i think i written uh, 10 articles and then at that point of time i i thought like now it's time to put all these things and start writing on my wordpress site yeah. okay and then i came back to india after a couple of months and 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 that time unfortunately covid started yeah. right and we started working from home so again i had time to do things right because now when you were before covid you were going office you had a lot of work your travels and everything was there so you do not even if you want to do that you 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 can't do those things right you can't take out the, but covid uh, gave me the opportunity to start working on these things so i created my wordpress site started writing the blogs on that and i figured i mean i even didn't know that if i write on uh, wordpress and when i post that it can share automatically on the linkedin so yeah, so, yeah. so 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 that was the basic uh, i mean understanding also i was not having it at that point of time i'm telling about 4 years now almost right but i started doing that and started writing these things right so so one of the challenge which i used to face is that selecting a right topic because i do not want to write or create something which is already there first thing uh i need to focus on the quality not the quantity that okay i need not to create the seven blogs in a one week time i need to create a one blog but it should have a quality which uh, which helps people to understand any functionality feature or solve any problem which they might be facing right Yeah. so that was the thought process which evolves over the period of time and i started writing now i am almost i mean include the video and the blog right it is almost 200 blogs right now and uh, uh, most of the blogs are explaining about some key features and the some problems uh, which which we can uh, solve using those things so that's what i did and then uh four five months back i started creating the youtube videos so now a lot of people ask like why you were not creating the youtube videos earlier right and why you were just writing but i don't know it's my thought process or maybe i'm bit old school or something i feel reading something is more efficient than watching right because what happens in a in a when you are talking about any concept or something you might ne- you 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 might not want the complete blog to read or maybe it is not completely relevant you want to go into a specific section right and by typing keywords or something you can in a single screen you can just uh uh scroll it out completely right and yeah. then reach to a relevant point but in video it is difficult that you have to watch figure it out where it 
which section which has section? that thing in and all these things right so your 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 time is spe- spent on the video is more than what, when you when you when you read it so that was the reason i was doing that but then uh, since everyone was doing the videos and i think people thought like uh, giving a demo on a video will be a a, a good thing to uh, i mean watch so i started creating the youtube videos so now i have reached uh, 20 plus videos now 1000 subscribers and hope to see like more to more content uh, uh, on this youtube as well now yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I mean, for your YouTube, I think one of the things I I agree with you, writing and reading blogs would be much ideal in a in a real way too. Because sometimes when we make a video, we want to talk about a topic, and it goes to like a seventy minute video, ninety minute video, right? Because you are skip. We cannot show. We cannot write in detail our thoughts on each part of it. So we're trying to condense it to make sure. Okay, it's still a watchable hour because no one has three hours in a day to to listen, right? But they st- definitely, ha- if you're re- if you're reading, you can just skip to the topic you need, and if you already know something, you can pass it. But yeah, I agree with you. But but on the video side, what I like is they get to know you a bit more and what your thought process is because solutions are mostly, in my view, when I became a solution architect, what I learned is. solution is all about your thinking and your way of solving a problem it's not about how to do it a lot of people can write how to do a certain thing but is it the right thing or wrong thing is the question <laughs> right you could you could do, you could set up a lot of things in a way but is that the right way to do it you have to you need someone who can think about it and say yes sir no so uh but let's go back to one of the key things you mentioned was like knowledge plus sharing right um one of the reasons for me to talk to like experienced people like you and others is you worked on a lot of unique situations and stuff let's think about you and me as well right people before us have worked on this too but all their knowledge is just with them and it's gone <laughs> right what yes. you're doing now is actually much more useful because all this knowledge is kind of preserved and we can have that in different forms either a video or a blog but it's kind of i feel like a lot of information from a lot of experienced people has kind of gone and that's why we notice in the new generation this podcast and other things are exploding because you get to hear from these people's experiences uh, and which is the unique thing that um it's like a unique knowledge to them and which can never be recreated no ai can create the topic create that experience so having people to share that knowledge and even talking to you and learning about your progress is why i am trying to do this podcast as well because your experience has to be documented somewhere in some form might not be in a full way in a podcast but getting to know you they will learn okay saurabh has gone through these phases so when i listen to your video i kind of have some of your experience to know about it so hopefully that helps um and the other thing i was also thinking was i remember like you i was also like i need to buy a website before i start anything <laughs> right and sometimes when you're not even young but even if you are a real professional we all have go through life and then even spending 30 bucks or 50 bucks or something it still like feels like i need to have a value before i put on it so people buy or want to buy and then start something but like you said linkedin articles free you can just start with linkedin articles and move ahead and then once you're at a certain space i like your concept of you bought it before but you still went back to writing on your blog and building that over there so uh, that's something good for uh, the people who are experienced or who are starting new so thank you for that insight yeah Um, and see in my opinion right so anyone wants the first thing in my opinion everyone should come out and share their knowledge yeah i mean in my opinion i i tell my all colleagues and you know there are more brilliant minds working with us who are not out there on linkedin or creating content and all those things i am 100% sure they are more brilliant than uh, i mean at least for me right i learn from those people every day right the, but only thing is like the challenge with them like they are so busy in their day to day work office things and th- like this they do not they do not have time to put out this thing and what i tell them you know if you want to talk about something tell me i mean come to my youtube channel we will have a share uh, sharing sure, session sure. knowledge sharing session and come and uh, do that 
or maybe start writing something or start helping on the community there is a forum just try to put your thoughts and the answers there so that's my request to everyone right uh, whosoever like you need not to even create a youtube video that's fine go to forum answer people question linkedin comment i think you you do there uh, some article you can write it come on the blogs or other videos or the podcast like uh, yours and, and anyone else right and share your uh, knowledge so you need to start somewhere and don't get scared uh, don't get uh, scared about uh, how what people will think no one thinks a lot of things about you okay people are busy in their own life and own things so go create it and 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 and, and start that's it yeah and i think well, even for me i would say i just started few months ago right it's very hard to reach out and ask for help and people but if you reach out genuinely people will say yes like saurabh said yesterday a lot of people and a community even if you're starting new and you have nothing just reach out and be part of it right uh, the other thing also i was thinking was you're very active on dynamic user group and other things right how important do you think that community engagement you already emphasized here now but let's maybe bring that dynamic groups aspect of it because that's where you if you're a newcomer you can join that group and start meeting people so what do you think uh, uh, the community engagement in your personal and professional growth has been i think it is really important and i think that is and that is what has uh, uh, has triggered the thought in me to start sharing the knowledge right so i always say that first thing you should do is that start with the community go to community.dynamics.com select okay. your right interest area finance operation crm not only the finops i'm talking dynamics crm finops or any business central anything select the right forum look out the questions what people are asking start helping them out it will do two things in my opinion one it will help those people to get your thought process that as a consultant what you think about the problem what they have put out yeah. that first thing they get a different opinion okay and that will definitely many times it does not help people to solve the problem by your answer it directly but it triggers a thought oh this is how also i can think of and then it leads to the solution to them okay yeah. so start putting uh, your thoughts against the questions though you do not have the exact answer just put your uh, thought process there the second thing how it helps you out you are working in one project today with one customer okay you are solving one set of problems you have your team to talk about those problems and you are solving together that's one customer but if you go to the community there are 10 different consultant from 10 different customer 10 different industry asking 10 different types of problem and if you are if you start reading those things and start responding to those things you are gaining the experience of 10 more customer 10 more industries 10 more different projects so in your experience in the time duration where you are working actually on a one project you have gained the knowledge of 10 more projects at the same point of time by just spending 30 minutes or 40 minutes every day on the community so it will enhance your experience knowledge and everything and trust me you will feel more comfortable and your knowledge base will increase so much that tomorrow when you go to the next project you will see like oh this problem i already know i i i have seen this problem maybe it's not your project maybe someone has explained in the community right so your knowledge base will increase i mean exponentially okay yeah. so that is the benefit you will get it okay so so in my opinion definitely we should go there talk about and of course you 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 get to meet lot of brilliant minds out there the people who are working in community you get to connect with them you will have a network out there so tomorrow you have a problem you know whom to reach out directly ping on linkedin hey i am facing this issue can you please help me out 
right so so that's another thing yeah and also like when you follow and when they shared something you can and you can elaborate on this like let's say you explained something you can elaborate with you like you can in- include your your problem into the question that you shared and ask him hey if i'm doing this for me can you help me what is your suggestion and people are happy to help you it's not going to be work and stuff but on the other hand i was also thinking in terms of um, what do you call knowledge side right um like i really want people to share like you i want people to always share and one of the things i learned was people always think even myself i've been not part of the community i'm happy to accept it but not in a good way but i realized at that time i was very much focused on keeping my job working so much on the job and always thought like i'll get some time later to join the community but if you are new or who wants listening i would suggest you guys that make time for yourself and get into these communities because you'll never have the right time so i made i was a bit slow but recently i decided i need to invest some time personally on my own end to enhance my career later and like you said exponential growth i think what you will learn joining groups and listening to videos of you or blogs or other people is you don't need to have that experience you can gain those number of years of experience by just being in this in like the videos you do on like live sessions and others by being part of those live sessions and asking questions you can gain that experience by sitting in a class for like 3 hours 4 hours right so uh, that's what people are forgetting and even i didn't realize in the beginning of my own career that I don't have to say like I need 5 years experience. I could just be even if I'm in my first year, I could join the group and keep asking questions and then you'll uh, you'll be in much uh, further ahead of your career. Um it it, it has it has you know uh, just to add on to that I mean even if you want to be selfish, right? Let's say why do I want to help anyone else? It's okay, you don't help just to help them, but I'll tell you your personal benefit. The first thing you will have personal benefit if you are active on uh, linkedin or anywhere you are building a network tomorrow you want to do a career switch you have a network people know you that this guy understand this particular thing very very well right so you have uh, you you have a very uh, i mean very very good opportunities to 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 grab if if you are already out there in the network right second thing if you go and out go out and speak right it builds your confidence while talking to the people you have a right way of phrasing and articulating your thoughts on any of the topic it boosts your confidence for the interview for see as a consultant we are the customer people right so you have to have a good way of talking to the customer i'm not talking about the good english Yeah. I'm talking about the way of communication. Though your English is not really good, your vocab is not good, but you should be able to talk to the customer in a right way, right? That will be uh, that that will be increased for you, right? That that will be good for you, right? So at a personal level, you have a lot of personal growth if you go out in the network, share your knowledge, speak out. So you should do with for your personal benefits, not for others' benefit, personal benefit. Yeah and also like one of the key things if you're new or even if you're already in the industry key things you learn is when someone's explaining you learn how to articulate how to put that question rightly right yeah. you know how to ask the right question to your consul or your business sometimes based on the examples you found like hey i need this information that i didn't know before this this is required for this kind of a uh, process or a, or a module right so you learn from that and i agree with you on this other thing as well in one of the books i was reading there like he says you need five kinds of like um, what do you call knowledge base for you right one is what you know so you can learn knowledge is something some you can do next is what you can do that you're learning through your experience but the main thing is who you know is actually more important because once you know the right people you can ask the right questions you can ask the right guidance or even if you f- you can just follow the right guidance from those careers so 
uh, and the other two are not relevant for this, but what you have and what you think of you, right? Those are like philosophical, philosophical maybe, but getting the knowledge and what you can do is not just enough because you need to know the right people to follow or join or be a part of. So uh, thank you. I, I think that's that's going to resonate with a lot of people if who have not been part of. And even myself, I didn't join it early enough. I kind of not regret it. I just feel like I'm few years behind. If not, I would have known you a few months ago or a year ago. Do you know what I mean? So we would have had this yeah. journey for this much time. So I'm excited that people will learn from that. Uh, and looking ahead, right? And thank you for your time today. And I didn't want to take more. But uh, looking ahead, what you're, I've done so far, what are your goals for the next year, maybe? What are your goals for your maybe professionally i think you'll go with the direction but on your youtube channel on your career in educating maybe what do you have in terms of that see uh i, I think on the youtube right or sharing my knowledge not only on youtube right uh, on youtube i think my uh, personal objective right now is uh, keep a track of the product knowledge sharing but i'm going to now more focused towards uh, on a functional side of the uh, business or the becoming a good consultant. Yeah. So I'm definitely going to talk about next one year on end to end, how any Microsoft Dynamics or any ERP transformation project works and what is the role of a consultant. And when you are in that particular transformation, then what are the things you are supposed to do and how you can do this. So talking about like, how do you conduct your customer workshops? How do you prepare the documents and the artifacts uh, in the project? So, and how do you solve the business problem? What should be your thought process? And how do you, how do you take a lead in all these areas, right? That is my, I think the content planning or the, or the, or the, you can say the plan for YouTube basically. And I am not able to, I'm thinking this for a couple of months, but I am not able to do this because unlike the product, I know that I do in and out every day. So I can just take out the system in one go, I create a video. I never take a pause or something, right? But for this, I need to prepare a content, prepare myself that what is the right way to communicate Good. this, how to break down into different videos and sessions. And that's why it is taking time. So I think that's one of the, objective for me to for the for the for the coming uh, months uh, on a professional level yes i mean I, I i think i would like to like i'm i'm heading in a direction where i can i can be part of bigger engagements and the global engagements uh, interact with lot a uh, lot many more customers right uh, uh, knowing the more businesses so i think that that is a key objective for uh, for me as a consultant. So, so yeah, that, that's how I'm going to do these things. Okay, no, thank you. So, no, that's all great. And thank you so much for your time. So, Saurabh, thank you again for sharing your invaluable experiences, insights with us today. And also your journey is not just inspiring, uh, but also it's like a testament to the power of learning, adapting, and especially giving back to the community, right? So I, I hope our listeners make sure to check out your channel. I'll put all the links for Dynamics class and your LinkedIn and other things. But uh, really appreciate your time and thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, and uh, I really appreciate your time. No problem, Rockner. And it was, it was great pleasure talking to you. And I'm looking forward to see more and more podcasts from your end with different people who are working uh, in different areas and sharing the knowledge and experience, right? So I always love uh, watching them and it is an experience for me and it, it helps me in learning new things. So yeah, thank you so much for having me. No, thank you so much and I appreciate it. So bye everyone. Bye.